In a previous video, I discussed coming up with a potential greedy algorithm for solving the total waited time to completion problem. So let me just remind you what the problem looks like. Um, you've got a set of jobs, 1 through n, and they're characterized by their lengths and their weights. And what you want it to do is to come up with an ordering of the jobs so that um, it minimizes the total waited time to completion. So remember how that's computed. The completion time of a job is the sum of all the jobs, be uh, the length of all the jobs before it, and the length of that job. And so then the for each job, you get a weighted time, wait times its completion time, and then you add that up for all the jobs. And what we want to do is try to minimize that. If you remember from the last screencast, what we did, we went through a number of steps, but the final step, we got a two can we had two candidates for potentially ordering the jobs and hopefully minimizing the total weighted time to completion. And one was the difference between the weights and the lengths and order them in decreasing order of that. And the other one was to order them in decreasing order of their weight to length ratio. And when we looked at that, bo tried both of those things out on a very simple example, we found that the total weighted time to completion of the ratio uh, ordering was better than the total time to completion of the difference ordering. So what that said is we can eliminate the difference ordering. We know that that won't yield the optimal solution. In this case, it doesn't. It misses it. So the question for this video is, does the ratio always give the smallest weight, total weighted time to completion? And so the rest of this video will be dedicated to proving that the ratio always gives the small, ordering by the ratio always gives the smallest total weighted time to completion. So let's get started on the proof. Basically, we're going to prove the correctness of the ratio ordering by using an ex what's called an exchange argument. So we'll get into where the exchange happens later, but um, right now I just want to give you the big picture of how the proof is going to proceed. We're going to have to make some assumptions. None of these assumptions really uh, affect the applicability of the proof. Um, they can all be relaxed. It just makes uh, the proof more complicated if you don't have these assumptions. So to keep the proof clean, we're going to make the following assumptions. Namely, that the weight-to-length ratios are all distinct. So there's only one possible ordering given by the algorithm. Assume that the jobs are labeled according to the decreasing weight to ratio. So in other words, job 1 is going to have the biggest ratio, and job n is going to have the smallest ratio. Okay, now we're going to assume that the proof is going to involve a contradiction, and we're going to assume that there's an ordering sigma star that's optimal but is different from the ordering given a, given to us by the algorithm. So this is the ordering where the jobs are labeled from 1, 2, 3, up to n. That's the order in which the jobs are going to be serviced. Whereas this ordering is supposed to be better, but is different. Then we're going to show that sigma star is not an optimal solution. In other words, we're going to exhibit a different ordering than sigma star that's better. That, that will contradict our assumption that sigma star is optimal and yet different from sigma, so hence the optimal solution must be sigma. So here's the critical step. The jobs are labeled according to decreasing ratios, and sigma star is not sigma, so it must have two consecutive jobs where i is bigger than j. In other words, i has a smaller ratio because it's numbered later, it comes later than j in the ordering by ratio, but i is before j in sigma star. Now, it's clear that there have to be two jobs that are out of order, but why do they have to be consecutive? Well, you start out with i and j just out of order and look at the numbering of the jobs between i and j. There must be, since i is bigger than j, there must be some pair of consecutive jobs in there where the numbers go down because j is less than i. So they, they can't keep going up. At some point, 
they've got to come down. And that's what we're going to focus on, is where they come down. Okay? So now we're going to have our job. We can think of our jobs as being jobs before I. Then we have job I and job J, which are out of order. And then the jobs after J. So make sure you understand that this, is the, this is really the crucial step in terms of getting things set up so we can do the exchange argument. So now we're going to do the exchange. So given the two consecutive jobs that are out of order, based where the order is based on the weight to length ratio, what happens if we switch the jobs? In other words, we exchange the jobs. What happens then? Now remember, we're working here in sigma star, so this is supposed to be the optimal uh, solution. This is supposed to give us the minimum, <coughs> excuse me, the minimum total weighted time to completion. Okay, so we're going to switch I and J, and we want to know what happens to the weighted completion times of all the jobs. Now, before we do that, uh, let's look and see what happens, uh, what, what the relationship between I, the ratio of I, and the ratio of J for J has to be. Now, remember, I is a bigger number, right? So this is a bigger number. So this ratio is smaller than this ratio because J comes earlier in the greedy algorithm ordering. Okay, so now all we do is cross multiply those and we get that WI times LJ is less than WJ times LI. So we multiply both sides basically by LI times LJ. So we get WI times LJ there and we get WJ times LI here. So, and what does that mean by just subtracting uh, WI length J from both sides? We get that that has to be bigger than zero. We're going to use this inequality to show what happens after we make the switch, after we make the exchange. So keep that in mind. In fact, it might be worth it if you got something to write on to write down the fact that we know that WJ times LI minus WI times LJ has to be bigger than zero. So now we're ready to do the final step. So the setup is the following. We've got jobs before job I, and we have job I, job J, and the jobs after job J. Now we're going to switch job I and job J. Notice that none of the jobs before job I are affected by that. In other words, their completion times are the same and their weights are the same. So none of those jobs are affected by this switch. Their contribution to the total weighted time to completion is not affected. Similarly, that's also true for the jobs after J because the jobs after J, they're they were the their this group of jobs started at C plus the length of job I plus the length of job J, and that's not affected when you switch these two jobs. So all we have to do is focus on the contribution of these two jobs to the total weighted time to completion. So here we go. Before the switch, so before the switch, job I's contribution to total weighted time to completion was WI times C plus LI, right? And job J's contribution was WJ times C plus LI plus LJ. After the switch, okay, after the switch, job J's contribution is going to be now be WJ times C times LJ, right? Because it's going to be done here. Job I's contribution is going to be W I times C times L J plus L I. So you can see what happens uh, for job I. Right, its contribution has gone up, but for job J, its contribution has gone down. Now, what is the result, though? Well, if you multiply these things out using the distributive law, 
okay, and subtract um, the after from the before, okay, so we're going to have before minus after, so we're going to subtract this from this. What are we going to get? We're going to get a minus wi times the length of j. So that's here. And here, when I take before minus after, I'm going to get wj times the length of i, and everything else cancels. And so I'm going to get wj times the length of i. So this is what happens when you take before minus after. But if you remember the inequality from the previous slide, this is greater than zero. So that means that before is, must be bigger than after. So after has the smaller total weighted time to completion. Bingo, we are done. That contradicts before being optimal. So ordering by decreasing weight to length ratio must give the optimal ordering. Because if the or ordering is not that, then we can do better. So that's it. Um, this is worth studying. Um, for those of you who've watched the previous video, um, there was a problem given in that video, and now you should be in good shape to try to attack that problem and prove the proof of correctness of that particular problem.